going back to social media day. Indiana, the second school to actually try to pull this off, and so far, so good. Drawing people to our Facebook accounts, our various Twitter accounts, and a Twitter account that has blown up in the last month or so. Uh, IU Coach Wilson, the head coach of the football program, turning things around here at Indiana. And Coach, uh, first of all, thanks for joining us. Second of all, how do you like Twitter and Lexi and doing all that kind of stuff? You know, uh, uh, Jeff Keg, it's our, our sports information guy for football, is doing a great job. We, uh, you know, we're getting some action shots and practice for the Facebook, uh, doing a nice job putting some clips of, of footage for the fans to follow. We're using it a lot to try to help with our recruits. So our recruits can follow us and get some interactive interviews with coaches. Lexi is basically instead of a of a Twitter type message, it's a voice message. So and I use that basically if fans want to get a feel of my opinion of practice, like if I'm talking to the media, you know, here's my comment of today's work, where we're going, what's going on. So I've enjoyed it. It uh, doesn't take a great deal of time, and we're really using it not just to reach our fans, but also to try to reach recruits. It's a great way to get. Let those guys find a better program. I think what has a lot of people excited uh, about the football program is the way that you have responded to questions uh, after practice. You're, you're not selling any soft soap. If they weren't mentally tough, you will say so. If they look better than expected, you will say so. Um, it's one of those things that's drawing people in. And you look at the history of Indiana football and with the Colts turning things around in the last 10 years, high school football improving, I think this campus is ripe to be a football school, maybe more so than ever before. Do you get kind of a sense of that? Well, and I don't know if it's a football school as much as it's a great school. We should be we should be strong in a lot of things. We've got a great commitment from the administrative athletic department and many sports, track programs rolling, swimming's doing well. You know, Tracy's doing a great job, baseball, softball's coming on. There's a lot of, you know, we can be strong in a lot of things. And in the football region, yeah, I think the Colts and the way Payton and and, and, and the, their staff is turning around with Coach Dungey and now what's going on with Coach Caldwell, that's affecting the high school kids, a lot of population. So, there's yeah, there's a lot to draw from. We're the state school. We're going to fight and compete for our state kids hard. But we'll recruit the region. We'll recruit, you know, other kids, not just our state, but uh, – I think this, I don't know if we're ripe to be a football school. I think we're ripe to start reaching our potential because there's no reason why we can't be a competitive, really strong Big Ten team. That's our challenge. That's what we're going to do. Well, I'm talking about the challenge. The practices have been challenging. Talking to DeMarlo Belcher yesterday, his helmet's nicked up, his shoulder pad's covered in mud, his face is all salty because he's been sweating the whole time, and he's completely exhausted after practice. Talk about the intensity of practice and how the kids have been adapting to it. Well, it's good. To me, you go really hard in spring because you're going every other day. You've got recovery time. Uh, your teaching practice will be a little bit longer. You're not really preparing for a game. And, of course, for us, we're, we're in store. We're limited with timeline and guidelines of how long we can go. But uh, I think spring's been good. Some up and down, give and take. Getting our kids to really get excited, coming to work, coming to practice, practice hard. Uh, that's my that's my deal. When, and, you know, and everybody says, you know, I mean, my response to questions, I'm just trying to be honest, uh, trying to be straightforward, um, don't really have an agenda. I don't try to pay, play things through the media. I don't think our kids read the papers anyway. I really don't. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just, you know, answering honest questions about where we're at. I think our team is working hard. I think we're on track to be a really good team. But to be so, we're getting ready to change phases from spring to summer. And in summer, coaches, we're not there. We're not allowed to be there. Weight coaches can be, but the players run the team. And the great teams have great summers. That means you have great seniors. We've been coaching the seniors harder than anyone, trying to teach them the values and the things we believe so they can lead our team as we transition from spring to summer. We've got uh, some questions and comments on our interactive element here. First off, uh, from Hoosier fan, Coach Wilson, welcome to the IU family. So they're excited to have you. And Yo MTV Raps asks, who was your favorite football player growing up, and why? Um, well, that's a good question. I grew, you know, I grew up in a in quote a basketball state, North Carolina. We didn't even have a pro football team, so you know, I, you know, my I was more of a team guy as a little kid. And always one of those little guys that had to pull for the winner. So I remember the early Packer teams in the late '60s. Never was a Cowboy fan, though Dallas was great. Got into the Dolphins and really kind of embraced. You know, I like Ray Nitschke all nicked up and Buckus and, and those uh, those tough dirtbag kind of guys. But uh, kind of grew up where, you know, my favorite players were Walter Davis and Michael Korn and 
and Billy kind of those basketball guys because I was a <laughs> basketball kid growing up and loved it. But you look at the North Carolina experience, you know, in the early 1980s with guys like Derek Fenner and Lawrence Taylor. There were some great football players that came through that program. Amos Lawrence, Kelvin Bryant, we had, well, those are strong teams. As a matter of fact, I think the, the last ACC championship was my freshman year in 1980, but we were four bowl teams in the top ten two years. Uh, got as high as ranked third a couple times, so really really had a great run there. That was when again, Carolina, I think, was really strong in a lot of sports. Basketball was rolling. Football was rolling. It's a great academic school. And I see some parallels to our institution here in Bloomington to what I saw in Chapel Hill. Uh, Bobby Joe Touchdown asks, at what age did you start playing football? Uh, you know, outside of playing yard, uh, Little League football in my own hometown, which was uh, is known as the biggest little football town in the world. <laughs> Google it up. Made in North Carolina. Biggest little football town in the world. Pee Wee football or Little League in the fourth grade. All right. You, you're coming and from... just like my son, I was scared to death and afraid to hit everybody. I don't buy that for a second. That's all little kids. We're all scared. <laughs> you got to learn how to run and hit somebody. All right. Now, you grew up in Carolina where they've got that peppercorn, vinegary style of barbecue. Then you moved to Big 12 country, and you're right in between Kansas City and Texas style barbecue. Do you have a particular flavor that you like? I explained that to one of our administrators yesterday. I am a pork. I don't like beef. I like beef, but I'm a pork barbecue guy, and I like the vinegar-based, uh, a little bit tangy, more tabasco -y type sauces. Oh, excellent, excellent. Now, what, talk about your staff. The, the staff, I think everybody is excited about. You look at Coach Mallory, Coach Eckler on defense. The position coaches are phenomenal. Coach Johns, uh, offense, it, it looks like a, a great staff that really works well together. It does, and I think we complement that, too, with the weight room. The administration doing a great job allowing me to incorporate three new weight coaches with Mark Hill, Will Peoples, Armand Satchel, and blend that with two of our previous staff guys with Josh Edson and, and Rick Dennison. Got five guys in the weight room, got a nutritionist trying to feed us better, eating better, got nutrition, condition to get in shape. Staff-wise, put five coaches on defense, Doug Mallory, Mike Eckler running it, Brett Derson, uh, Mark Hagan up front with Brandon Shelby in the back end, both Brent and uh, um, Mark doing special teamwork offensively, having a lot of influence myself and in what we're doing. Still coaching tight ends right now. We'll get a GA in place to kind of help complement me and the offensive line coach. But uh, two guys from Michigan, Greg, uh, Greg Fry, Rod Smith, a lot of a lot of common knowledge, work ethic, very similar to what we did at Oklahoma Northwestern. Kevin Johns and of course Dylan played for me, so a lot of harmony, different backgrounds, but it blends well together and very blessed the way the staff has come together. I think it's going to be a great group. A couple more questions from fans. Sam wants to know, how's your golf game? Is that Sam Bradford? Because <laughs> he's been wanting to play me. Uh, I haven't played since Naples, but it is close to uh, going out. The uh, The clubs are, are getting ready to roll, so we got a couple of duck hooks and shanks, but we're going to play well. All right. Now, Hoosier Mania asks uh, two questions. How hard is it to come into a program with players you didn't recruit and do you try to change your style to fit your team, or do you try to have the players fit your scheme? I, do, I, I don't try to have the players fit our scheme. I try to have our players fit our demands, our expectations. So we told the players, we're not coming to their level of how they want to work or how they want to practice or their body language. And I mean, we've had direct meetings on how to act in a meeting room and how to really pay attention and learn. Because if you're in that meeting room, no different than the kid going to class, not paying attention, how's he going to get a good grade? So we've tried to coach our kids on the expectations of how to work. Schematically, I've always changed based on what the quarterback can do and the offensive line can block. So same thing defensively. So um, I, we're not going to be – we don't have a playbook. We're going to have full core values that we believe win, being physical, playing smart, playing hard, playing tough, have some balance in the offense, stop the run defensively, be clean, sound in the kick game. But each year we're going to tweak it to play to the strength of what our kids physically can do. Well, it's been very competitive in practice, and the first three scrimmages it looked like the first two that the defense maybe got a little better of it than the offense. The offense kind of had their day this past weekend, and talking to some of the players on both sides, they're very competitive 
and wanting to send a message to the other side this weekend in the spring game, and you're going to go good on good this weekend. Yeah, and I, and I like that. We, you know, to me, practices have to be competitive. And as coaches, I think our staff's pretty good because it's not like, hey, the offense is getting one on the defense or the defense is getting one on the offense. It's nice to see some give and take. I do think our defense needs to keep making strides because I think defensively when you go against someone every day, you get comfortable where you can really lock them down and shut them down. So love to see our defense keep coming on strong, keep and score. At the end of the day, we're still zero and zero. So it's not about who, who wins and who loses a practice format. But uh, I think our coaches are doing a great job creating a competitive environment. I think our kids are playing hard. We're playing smart. We're not taking cheap shots on each other, but we are being physical. And, and with the hardest hit the, in practice was when we ran over the camera guy yesterday. Yeah, John need, Book took it on the chin. We need to get a shot of that one. I'd like to see that one. That's the hardest. I told the Marlowe that's the hardest hit somebody else bring. He's been filming practice for about 20 years here, and he said it's the first time it's ever happened to him. And apparently he completely got laid out by DeMarlo. It was awesome. I want to see that one. It was a big time. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much for joining us. You can follow him on Twitter, IU Coach Wilson. I tweet quite a bit about the football program at JF Gray. Uh, IU Shauna Daniel or Shauna Dan does it as well. So you can follow uh, the football program on Twitter. Things up on YouTube all the time. Jeff Kig does a great job getting that stuff up there. And of course, all the games either on ABC, ESPN, or the Big Ten Network. Coach, thanks so much for stopping by. Good luck with the spring game. Appreciate it. Hope to see a lot of people at the game. Thanks. You got it. We'll take a quick time out. More on the way on social media day. <laughs> 